Hello guys, Nick Larkin, one new Focus Fitness Train. Today, today I'm doing my new video, which is part of my top 8 muscle building series. Okay, now in this one, we're going to be hitting the quads. Okay, because we've done the whole upper body, the arms, and the forearms. Okay, so now we're going to hit the lower body. Okay, so like I say, we're hitting quads. Okay, in this one, like I say, I've assisted through all these exercises because they're mainly focused on the quads. Okay, you will get some hamstring and glute activation out of some of these, like with the sort of squats uh, exercises. Obviously, because when you're going to come up, it's going to activate those hamstrings and glutes as well. Okay, but don't worry, I will be doing another obviously video for top uh, top eight muscle building for the hamstrings as well. So don't worry. But again, don't worry if those muscles do activate in some of these exercises. It is guaranteed to happen. Okay, because these muscles do sometimes work together. Anyway, the first one we're going to do is squats. Okay, in this one, okay, and squats is one of the daddies of all ex leg exercises. Okay, um, <coughs> and it can be done I mean, uh, in a variation of uh, different different variations, basically. Okay, now you can do it with a barbell. Okay, you can do a barbell as a front squat. Okay, or back squat. Okay, or even a hack squat where you have Offer your plates, uh, sort of plates behind you, and you'll sort of heels on them, and obviously give it a different feel. Okay, uh, <coughs> but you can also do it with dumbbells. Okay, uh, now if you're training at home, I would suggest use dumbbells. Obviously, if you haven't got a lot of room, okay, haven't got a lot of equipment, okay, then use those dumbbells. Well, make sure you load them up. Okay, uh, if you've got your own home gym and you've got room for barbells, and everything like that, fantastic. Okay. I would also though, though suggest that obviously if you're gonna do the leg day, do it at the gym. Okay, especially if you're part of the gym, okay, or a member of the gym. Okay, doing leg day is essential. Okay, you should never, never skip leg day. Okay, <coughs> as we know. Um, but yeah, obviously I would say the gym is sometimes always a little bit better for legs. Okay, because it has the proper equipment that you need. Okay, they will have the weight you need. They will have the increments. That you need as well so you can adjust it the right way okay but like i say if you're a bit shy about going to the gym not very confident okay but you have some equipment at home and you know what you're going to be able to do but do it safely okay then use the equipment at home okay obviously but like i say if you haven't got a lot of equipment but you've got a pair of dumbbells then use those okay but also obviously with dumbbells you can have them in different positions as well like down hanging by your side or on your shoulders okay uh, if they're flat top ones, okay, they've got no sort of spin locks, okay, if they're flat, obviously you can rest on your shoulders quite comfortably or down both sides. If they're spin lock ones, you're not really going to have them on your shoulders, they can be a bit uncomfortable, so I would usually have them hanging by the sides. They're the ones I'm going to be using a day, okay, so I'm not going to have them on the sides, I'm going to have them down on the sides, sorry, not on my shoulders, okay. So, <clears throat> but you need to make sure that you get the right position when you're doing it. A squat, okay. Well, a lot of people that's where a lot of people tend to fail, okay. You need to have your spine in, in a sort of good thoracic extension, okay. You don't want to be going down and going forward too much, okay, because that's where you're going to fail, hurt yourself, injure yourself, and then maybe even limit your gains, okay. So, you want to be sort of going down, okay, but trying to keep yourself up right as much as possible, okay. <coughs> but, now, if you do have a little bit limited on, the, on, on your mobility, okay, only do, go down as far as you can. Okay, don't try and sort of sacrifice anything where you're going to hurt yourself. Okay, just do what you can. But obviously, if you can go down nice and low, okay, we're trying to keep good thoracic extension. Okay, then make sure you can do that. Make sure you do that properly. Okay, but you have to be careful with weight, okay, because they can tend to pull you forward, okay, especially when you're using dumbbells, obviously, and the hang by sides, you've got to try and sort of fight it a little bit more and get that good thrust extension. So, if you need to practice it with body weight to start with, then do that, okay, and then graduate to weights, okay, or even if you just need to do a few warm up sets to get yourself ready, okay, so you've got the dumbbells, all right, this one properly, okay. So you get about sort of hip width, maybe slightly wider. Go down slowly, keep yourself in that thrust extension. Up, gently, down, up, down, 
up, down, up, down, and up. Okay? As you saw, I did that under control. Okay? I didn't do it halfway too fast. Okay? Plus, I made sure I got full hip extension. Okay? So that's this is where the, the glutes and the hamstrings will come into play a little bit. Okay? Especially with um, any sort of squatting exercise, they will activate, okay, those muscles. But you must make sure you get full hip extension, okay, because a lot of people tend to sort of stop it short, okay, and don't get a full. You want to make sure that your hips go fully forward, you engage your glutes and hands as well, okay, so you get proper full activation of the muscles, okay? <coughs> okay, so, but anyway, that is your squat, but you wouldn't be doing, say, that. Three sets, maybe 10 to 12 rep max, okay, but like I say, you want to be loading those weights up and making sure that those weights make a change, okay? Make sure that you push yourself, okay, and they're heavy enough so you're going to fail in that sort of 10 to 12 rep max range, okay? You don't want to be finding that you can do more, okay, and then obviously, and then just stop at 12, even though you thought you could do 15, okay? If you feel you can do more, then do more. Or if you do a higher volume of reps to elicit a reaction out of the muscles, okay? So if you, if you look, weights are too light, obviously, either do it in slow motion, so do it really slow and controlled, okay, which can make the weights heavier after a period of time, okay? Okay, or obviously go for a higher volume of reps, okay? <coughs> anyway, that's just squats. And the next one we're going to do is called pull throughs. Okay, now you can again do this at the gym, okay, or at home with a band, okay. Now, the band, it's a wrap around my glute bar at the bottom, okay. You step over, okay, like you would in the gym, okay. You want to make sure you get enough tension, okay. So, come on, try a little bit. Okay, so when you get enough tension, Okay, but again, because you're going, you're going to be in a squat position, you want to get that right thoracic extension, okay, the spine. Okay, you don't want to be going over too much. You don't want to be doing this, okay? Too much, okay? You want to be engaging those quads, okay? So get the right sort of tension, okay? If you have to walk away a little bit, you do. Okay, go down, go down, go down, go down. Pull. Go down, go down, go down, go down. Pull. Lower, pull, lower, push, push. Okay, now I'm not actually pulling with my arms, okay? I'm pulling, pushing through with my legs, okay? Pushing through with the quads and the glutes, okay? Um, obviously, again, a bit of a hand book, obviously, because it is in a sort of squat position, okay? Any yeah, of those sort of ones, like I say, will activate those back muscles, okay? But again, obviously, because you're going down in that good position, you're obviously working the quads, okay? And getting them so that when you come up, you can push through, okay? And like I said, the arms aren't actually pulling, they're not pulling the band, they're just going with the direction that I'm going in, okay? So, as you can see, I'm not actually moving my arms. Okay, they're just going in that static there, in that static position, okay? They're just holding the band there, keeping that tension there, okay, so that I can actually get the reps out that I need. Okay, you won't be doing it with the arms because then you can be working shoulders. We're not doing shoulders in this one, we're doing the legs, okay? These are in the static position, okay? They just hold the tension on the band or the cable of what you're holding, okay? Now there may be a tendency to pull the arms, but don't. Okay, make sure we keep them nice, dead, sturdy, still. Okay. Um, <coughs> but again, that one I would say again three sets of you say ten to twelve rep max. Okay. Again, if you feel you can increase the volume of it, obviously they, they do. Obviously that's up to you. Okay. But again, I'll say as long as you uh, whack on enough weight on the stack, if you're doing it at a gym. Okay, then if you're doing home and band, make sure you get enough tension on the band as well. Okay, but I'll say, I'll say three sets of 10 to 12 rep max to get that right hypertrophy. Okay? Anyway, that's your pull throughs. Again, like I said, you can do that at home with just wrap around a bar, okay? Or 
somewhere that's low enough to wrap around, okay, so you can get the right sort of direction, okay? Um, <coughs> you don't want to be doing it from anyway high because it's not going to work, all right? Uh, the next one we're going to do is a three-way lunge. Okay, now I like a three-way lunge, okay, because you're working in the different planes. Okay, you're working in your frontal plane, uh, okay, your sagittal plane, okay, your lateral plane, your side, okay, and your transverse plane, which is behind you. Okay, so you can obviously do a forward lunge, a side lunge, and a backward lunge. Okay, not a reverse lunge, a backward lunge. Okay, which is different. Okay, <coughs> which we'll see in a minute. I give it a light boom then because it, it hits your quads in a different ways. Okay, you're hitting it off, you go in front, hitting it going to the side, then hitting it going back. Okay, and it, like I say, it just hits those quads in a different way. Okay, and gives them a good all round workout. Okay, hits them in all, all areas. Okay, because there are like four muscles that actually make up the quadriceps that run down the legs. Okay. And you want to be making sure you hit all four of those muscles, and doing this can do that. Okay, but you need to make sure that obviously that you not in every single workout. Okay, but in some of your workouts, you need to be fitting in stuff where you work in different areas, different directions. Okay, like when you do for some core work, you do a three-way pull, crunch, pull down with a cable or a band. Okay, you go to the side, go to the other side, middle, side, side, middle. Okay, and that, that that's one example. Okay, you can do it obviously with uh, remaining deadlifts with one leg. Okay, you can do it with your obviously your right, then your left, then the middle, your right, the left, and the middle, and so on. Okay, um, but again, so example, there are, there are just a few examples. Okay, but uh, that's why I say working in those sort of different areas is good. Okay, because it hits different parts of the leg. Okay, or different parts of that muscle. Uh, yeah, and works in a slightly different way, okay, which means you elicit a better reaction and get better results, okay. Okay, so what we're going to do again, do it with weights, okay. So again, if you're doing it at a gym, or if you get a heavy enough pair of dumbbells, okay, not ones that are going to topple you over, okay, where you can't lift, but ones that are going to obviously make sure you're stressing the muscle properly, okay. And if you're doing it at home, often you've got pair of dumbbells that are heavy enough and make sure you work them as well. Okay, come up. Okay, what you can do is you go forward, lunge, a side lunge, okay, and a backward lunge. Okay, so as you see, it's forward, side, and then Back behind me. Forward, side, behind me. Okay, and then you swap sides and do it that way. Okay. okay put the weights down there. Okay. But like I say, make sure that you're working different planes. So I'm going to forward, then you go side, and then you go to your transverse and then obviously if you want to alternate it you then go obviously forward side and then transverse plane okay now that's if you want to alternate it you can just do one side and then do the other side okay it's completely up to you and how you want to do it okay i say if you want to alternate it alternate it if you want to do one side at a time then do one side at a time and then work the other side while that side rests okay it's completely up to you, okay? Obviously, but either way is just as good, okay? Um, but like I say, sometimes if you do do one side, obviously, and then go to the other side, while that side rests, again, there is that non wasted motion, okay? So sometimes that can work some better for some people than other people, okay? But again, totally up to you on how you do that. That is your three way lunge. Like I say, I find that they're good because you're working in different planes. Okay, and get a good all round workout for the quads. Okay, um, <coughs> anyway, the next three, okay, are quite explosive. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is lateral jumps with a kettlebell. Okay, if you don't have a kettlebell, then use a dumbbell. Okay, uh, not too bulky a dumbbell, uh, I don't mean not heavy, but just one that's not too bulky so you don't hit yourself in the face. Okay, or use a weight plate. Okay, if you don't have those. Okay, but I'm going to use a kettlebell, like I said. Okay, so 
But I find that doing explosive exercises is good, okay, especially if you're someone who does uh, martial arts, okay, or MMA fighting, or um, an aspiring athlete that, that has to have explosivity in the, in, the, in the way they train, okay, or you want to just be more explosive, okay, then explosive is essential, okay, especially like I say, if you're what, like one of the MMA fighters or uh, martial artists or something, you have to be explosive and some athletes have to be explosive as well, okay? So explosive is, is quite necessary, okay? But even if you just want to be more explosively powerful or more powerful, okay, then explosive training is essential, okay? And to be more athletic, okay, it just generally, anyway, okay, then you have to train in some explosive ways as well, okay? And then I find uh, these next three are fantastic, okay, for building the legs up and giving them that, that explosive power, okay? Anyway, we're going to get the dumbbell, okay, um, with the lateral jumps, what we're going to do is we're going to start from the core position, okay, so it would be like a bit of a skier hop, okay, okay, when you're not passing uh, the kettlebell, okay, but what we're going to do is we're going to hold it in that sort of right angle position, so we're going to coil on the outside leg, so it's going to load it up and come off this leg. Okay, and what we're going to do is when we push off the leg, I'm going to push the kettlebell up and land on the other leg, and like so. Okay, so see, so yeah, it actually is. There you go. <sighs> Okay, and that's your first way of doing it. Okay, that's your normal natural jumps. Okay, so that one. Okay, the next one again is going to be naturally jumping. Okay, but you can be using your inner leg only. Okay, so it's the same sort of motion of pushing up. Okay, but the leg you coil it off of is your, the leg you're going to land on as well. Okay, so you'll see what I mean. Okay, so coil up and then push up. And I've pushed off. I've landed on the same leg that I pushed off of. And then swap legs. And then, okay, swap legs. Like so. Swap legs. And then, like so. Swap legs. Like so. Okay, so as you can see, that one could be a little bit more difficult, okay? Because you've got to work on your balance as well, okay? Uh, but obviously, just do what you can. If you can't do it with a heavy or, or medium weight, then you start with a light weight, okay? Or even just use your own body weight and just push your hands up in the air, okay? Okay, that's for your inner leg, okay? Next one is for your outer leg, okay? So obviously, you can get the kettlebell. Again, it's going to be very similar, okay? Uh, so what we do, the last two, can okay, we load up on the outside leg, okay, and then obviously you're going to explode up, okay, so explode up, and that's on the outside leg, okay, load up on that leg, explode up, and then again, okay, and then the last one, okay, and that's how you do it that way, okay? And that's those three different variations, okay? Now, they're very similar, okay, in the way they're executed, but they do work the legs in a slightly different way, okay? Because again, you can work in the muscles explosively, okay, but in a different way, you can give them that power as well. And even for some sort of bulk, obviously, with when you're doing the coiling, okay? But again, it's more, uh, can be working on, on that explosive power, okay, that you have, okay, but again, really, really, sort of, good way to train is explosively, okay, so, obviously, if you're going to get a chance to do some explosive training or fit into your leg training, then must do, and must do, okay, then I would, I would definitely fit into your arsenal, okay, maybe not every single workout, okay, but at least some or most of your workouts, okay, um, especially if you're one of those athletes that needs that explosivity, Okay, uh, anyway, but obviously 
Again, I'll do sort of say three sets of that, okay, or three sets of each, okay. Obviously, um, but with those ones, do them sort of do about sort of ten to twelve reps, okay. Again, okay, because obviously doing those will sort of knack you out after about ten to twelve reps, okay. Especially if you've already done um, a load of heavy leg training to start with, okay. So about ten to twelve reps for three sets, okay. Um, or right, second last one, okay. Uh, so near the end, okay, is our crush grip squat. Okay, now you have one dumbbell for this. Okay, you have it in the middle of you. Okay, and you're gonna crush, try and crush the life out of it. Okay, so you're gonna get some chest activation out of this, especially middle. Okay, which is always a bonus. Okay, um, <clears throat> but it's also gonna make you focus on the course. But you have a sort of a wider stance. Okay, so you have a wider stance. Okay, feet. I'm going to be pointing slightly outwards, okay, as you go down, so see my feet there, they're pointing outwards, okay, and I'm going to go down, sort of like so, okay, but yeah, you get, obviously, a good heavy enough dumbbell, okay, but you want to be doing this one for about 12 to 15 repetitions, okay, to get that extra bit of hypertrophy, okay, and extra sort of, sort of muscle bulk out of it, and uh, sort of strength as well. Alright, so you get the dumbbell, okay. And so you grip the life out of it, pushing it together, get a little wide, feet point outwards, and go down. Okay, try and go down as far as you possibly can. Okay, again, keeping good. Thoracic extension, okay. Okay, by the end of that, you will, your legs will be near enough cinched, okay. Because, like I say, because you're doing the extra few reps after the 12 and trying to make it to the 15, okay, it will cool your legs, okay. But three sets of 12 to 15 repetitions, like I said, with that extra little bit of volume, okay, again, so it's a slightly different way of training, okay, so it will also elicit that reaction that you need, okay, because you want to do all sorts of different sort of training, you need to, you need to be explosive, okay, obviously you need to, obviously do uh, increased volume, increased weight, okay, you need to do, uh, or work on your eccentrics, okay, or, uh, you know, pause, like rest pause, sort of techniques, okay? Different, there's always lots of different techniques you can use to elicit a reaction, okay? You just have to find the right ways, okay, in the, doing the exercise. It's not so much the exercises, it's more the way you do the exercise, okay? Um, sometimes you have to pick certain exercises for certain things, okay? Because not all things work, okay? But usually if you can tweak an exercise and make it slightly better, then you're always going to get the best result possible, okay? And that's what we do on this channel. We try and give you the best and most up-to-date new techniques and best techniques, even if they're classic ones, okay, so that you guys can get the results that you need, okay? Anyway, but that is um, obviously your crush grip squat. Make sure you're crushing the life out of it, okay? Like, so you will get a chest activation, especially in the middle, okay? But also work on those quads. Make sure the feet point outwards as well, okay? And obviously you keep that good thoracic extension in the spine as well, okay? Um, anyway, uh, the last one we're going to be doing is wall sits, okay? Um, not a lot of people do it, okay? Some people do do it. You can do it with a Swiss ball, okay? If you find it's better, or you can do it also, like I say, against the wall. Okay, <laughs> right. Now, like I say, you can do this either with one, one weight, like I say, a kettlebell in front of you, okay? But I would prefer, oh, I prefer to have two dumbbells either side, okay? Because it makes it even harder. Okay, again, the happy sort of fair enough weight, okay, so you're not going to be there forever, but you're going to fail to a certain point, okay, but it is an isometric exercise, okay, and as I've said in my, uh, my, isom my isometric, can, or my concentric, isometric and eccentric video, okay, last year, um, obviously, <coughs> that, obviously, your isometric is actually slightly stronger 
than your concentric, whereas your eccentric is stronger than your isometric. Okay, so you, you're going to be like having that slight eccentric lowering, okay, because you're going to be sort of trying to withstand, obviously, like from falling to the floor, okay, but you're going to have more of an isometric effect because you're going to be in a static position, okay. But you need to try and sort of overpower that lactic acid sort of not let it win, okay? So if it gets painful, don't just give in. Try and push through that and go to an extra failure, okay? So even if you start off as an isometric and then start to do that eccentric lowering, that's a good thing. It causes more muscle fiber damage, okay? So you get better results. Okay, so it gets weight. Okay. See as well. Go down nice and low, and then you hold it there. Okay, but make sure that when you do do this, okay, okay I'm just going to show you that way. Make sure that when you do do it, obviously, when you get to that position, you don't just fall, okay? You don't want to be doing that, okay? Because that's obviously you're going to hurt yourself, okay? And so you don't want to be doing that, okay? When you get to obviously doing the weights, okay, I'm going to try and make sure. That obviously you've got a good sturdy start, okay, and that you can hold yourself there for as long as you possibly can, okay. When you get to the results, say last two, three seconds, don't fall down, okay. You want to make sure that you can do it properly, okay, or at least slide yourself back up really gingerly or like really slowly, okay, so you can pick the weights up and put them down gently. Because if you can sit, stand there and hold it for so long, then you can surely slide yourself up gently, okay, and put them down gently, or slide down slowly. Even, even if it does get to that point where you, you've gone to the point of no return, okay, even if it just be going down nice and slowly and put them down like that, okay, that's more acceptable than obviously just dropping them, okay. And then hold them for as long as you possibly can. Okay? The legs may start to shake. You hold them, hold them, hold them. You get to that failure, let's say, gently, slowly, low down. Okay? And that is a much safer way of doing it. Okay? Um, obviously, now you may find that once you've done this, okay, uh, once you've go to that exercise, if you fit it in, if you've done a lot of heavy leg training uh, to start with, you may not be able to hold it for very long, okay? Obviously, uh, you can sometimes have a little bit better grip with shoes, okay? Often I'm not wearing shoes at the moment, but obviously, again, obviously, um, <clears throat> just try and hold it for as long as you possibly can, okay? Um, like I say, don't try not to do anywhere too slippy, okay? And maybe wear some shoes, obviously, so you've got a bit more grip, okay? Especially on a hardwood floor like this, or a slippy floor, okay? Uh, because you don't want to be falling over and hurting yourself, okay? Uh, but luckily, I had enough grip, okay? Um, but like I say, if you need to, and you get to that point of no return, make sure you let yourself down not so slowly. The weights may make a little bit of a noise, okay? But not too much of a noise, okay? They're not going to be thuddering on the floor and cracking or breaking it, okay? Um, <clears throat> and like, like I say, make sure you don't just drop them as well, okay? Or even if you sort of push yourself back up slightly and then walk off and put them back on the rack, okay? Make sure you put your weights back on the rack, okay? Because it's respectful for the gym, okay? Because no one likes people leaving weights everywhere, okay? It's just fucking annoying, okay? Um, so make sure you put the weights back on the rack because it's respectful for everyone else, okay? Um, <coughs> Anyway, guys, that is your wall sits, okay? Now, that one you mostly just want to do for time limit, okay, after your leg exercise, because like I said, it's, it's a nice metric exercise, but it's also going to be burning your legs out, okay? So it's going to be that final exercise you do, say, for one set, okay, until after you, the end of your leg exercise. Once you've done that, that's it, your legs will be cinched, okay? They will be quivering, wobbling, okay, and must be sore within the next few hours, okay? Um, but again, I find it's a great one to do, okay, especially at the end of the leg exercise, uh, because it does make it a lot harder, okay, so which makes it a bit more challenging, but try and push it um, and hold it for as long as you possibly can, okay? But anyway, 
that is obviously a wall sit for you. But obviously you can do it with Swiss ball as well, okay? Uh, against the wall, okay? If you have a Swiss ball, okay? If you don't have weights, obviously then use just a Swiss ball. If you just got a Swiss ball, if you don't, then obviously you can use your own body weight as well. Uh, but anyway guys, that is my top eight muscle builds for the quads. Okay, um, I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and a like. Or if you don't forget to follow us on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and here on the YouTube channel, Focus Fitness. And make sure you hit that subscribe link button in the link below, okay? Or hit the link that's going to appear up on the head very soon, okay? Also, leave your comments what you thought about the video on how you feel it went, okay? Uh, or, or what, or what, uh, sort of which exercises are your favourites, if you've got any favourites, okay? Or if you want to see more videos on legs, okay? Whereas anatomy on legs, okay, more leg exercises, or secret ways of building muscle even uh, in different ways, okay? Or if, even if it's a di completely different video, like a nutritional video or anything like that, leave your comments in the link below, in, in the sort of comments area below, okay? And let me know what you want, you guys want to see, and I'll try and get those covered in the days and weeks and months ahead, okay? Um, I'm also going to be sticking in some videos here very soon, okay, for some other leg videos that I've done, okay? If you haven't checked them out, make sure you do, because they're awesome, okay? Um, also, make sure you, if you do subscribe to the channel, that you can follow us every single step away and never miss a video post on this channel. Make sure you click the bell, okay? <coughs> um, plus, if you think it's going to help a friend or a family member, get them to subscribe. Get them to follow us every single step away and never miss a video posted on this channel as well. Okay, like I said, I, guess, I hope you enjoyed the video. Obviously, I will be doing one for the hamstrings as well very soon. Okay, so don't worry. Obviously, like I say, there was, there was a bit of activation for the hamstrings and glutes in this one. Okay, but that is a given, obviously, the fact of those leg exercises. Okay, but like I said, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in a few days with my brand new video. Okay, cheers, bye.